ovarian cancer will affect approximately 1.6% of all women in the United States, so it's not a common cancer. The problem is with ovarian cancer is it's a very lethal cancer. So the most common gynecologic malignancy that we encounter is actually uterine cancer, but we're able to cure it many times with surgery with some radiation therapy or chemotherapy. But the problem with ovarian cancer is we usually pick it up late and it is the most lethal of the gynecologic malignancies. We used to call ovarian cancer a silent killer, but now we call it a, a cancer that actually whispers because it does have subtle early warning signs and symptoms. We now are aware that we can really warn women to the early signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer and that they need to bring these to the attention of their physician. The problem with these early signs and symptoms of the disease is that they are very common symptoms that every woman will have at some point in her life. The importance is, is that anything that persists for a woman that's not explainable and ongoing needs to be further evaluated. We usually evaluate with a pelvic exam, an ultrasound, a CA-125, and maybe a CT scan. Screening for ovarian cancer generally entails a transvaginal ultrasound, which is where we insert a wand into the vagina to really take a very close look at the ovaries and get our best views of the ovaries with ultrasonography screening. We also many times incorporate a tumor marker or blood test called CA-125 in order to try to pick up ovarian cancer early. And then always a pelvic examination should also be done in, by the physician or healthcare uh, professional. There's been a new move or a newer move for many gynecologists to incorporate ultrasound screening, uh, ultrasound evaluation of the ovaries. But generally it's done by either a radiologist or somebody who has a special interest in pelvic imaging. Imaging, and that may be a radiologist or another healthcare professional, such as a gynecologist or GYN oncologist. CA125 is a tumor marker that we really use to follow women who already have a diagnosis of ovarian cancer. We're able to pick up ovarian cancer recurrences by a CA125 tumor marker, and that's where it's really been the most useful. The problem with CA125 to use it as a screening marker is it lacks sensitivity, meaning that early ovarian cancers actually are not associated with an elevated marker level about 50% of the time. And these are the type of cancers that we're trying to pick up with um, screening. CA125 also lacks appropriate specificity in younger, in younger women because many inflammatory conditions can produce an abnormal CA125, many benign conditions can produce an abnormal CA125, so that it lacks the appropriate sensitivity and specificity as we use it now. There are two large studies which have been reported on recently with the utility of CA125 and ultrasound screening in the early detection of ovarian cancer. They've had somewhat discrepant results. One of these studies is actually from England, which has probably the largest experience with ovarian cancer screening with the largest number of patient po patients enrolled at a time through the utilization of the National Health Service in England. And these individuals have recently demonstrated that if we use something called a risk of ovarian cancer algorithm, which incorporates a woman's family history, her age, her rate of rise of CA125, along with ultrasound screening, that we may be able to pick up ovarian cancer earlier. However, these studies have not translated yet into any d results in which have noted a decrease in the risk of mortality from ovarian cancer, which is really the gold standard in a screening study. It may be that not using CA125 in an ultrasound in isolation may be our snapshot in time. We may have to look at the whole picture for a woman, including her risk of ovarian cancer based on her family history or even her menstrual history or her age, along with that, how that CA125 changes over time. And that's something that's been discussed for at least 10 years now, but is also now being recently employed in studies and has maybe some promise to it in the future. Other investigators are also looking at new markers for ovarian cancer based on proteomics or looking at little pieces of proteins in, in women's blood. And that's generated some interesting results so far in terms of um, some, some 
potential tumor markers. However, those results need to be validated. So to date, if somebody comes in to an office or is discussing how to screen for ovarian cancer, generally we recommend a CA125 and an ultrasound every six months and a discussion on en of enrollment into a clinical research trial in which blood and can be collected for future use for studies such as proteomics and genomics work.